by black podcast episode 5b five actions that you can take to start building your personal brand welcome to buy black the only podcast dedicated to helping you find connect with and support black owned businesses we're on a mission to bring consumers and business owners together to ignite the global black economy I'm your host, Gerald Jones, and if you're a black business owner or a socially conscious consumer, you've joined the right community. Ready? Let's get to work. Hey guys, welcome back to Buy Black. Today, we are going to be expanding on a little tidbit that my guest earlier this week, Brandon Campbell, mentioned a few times during his episode. Uh, If you haven't listened to episode five with Brandon from Little Rock Fashion Week, you definitely need to do it. He drops nothing but bombs all during the show. You can find that at buyblackpodcast.libson.com. But specifically, Brandon mentioned a few times during the show that as he grew his career in the entertainment industry, he would put his brand on projects that he would work on. And, and putting his brand on those projects drew other people to him to want to work with him. And so expanding on that, I wanted to spend this episode to talk about what it means to identify your personal brand, to build that brand, and use it to your advantage in the marketplace. So today's episode is five things that you should focus on to build your personal brand. And in this episode, you guys are probably going to get a little bit more storytelling out of me. Um, The only thing I can talk about is my own experience in building my personal brand in the different markets that I work in. And so... I'm going to tie in a lot of the things that I talk about with my story and my experience, but this applies to everybody. It applies no matter what market you work in, no matter how you plan to use this information, it applies. So in places where I'm talking about my story, try to think about times or events in your life where you've either been able to focus on your personal brand or where Hey, if you had known or focused on your personal brand in this situation, you could have put yourself in a better spot so that you can plan on the next time being able to do that. All right. So what we're going to do today is basically I want to define the concept of what a brand is. We're going to talk about why you need to see yourself as a brand and market yourself as a brand. And then we're going to talk about those five things that you should focus on in order to start building your brand. So the first thing here, let's just jump right into it. Defining the concept of what a brand is. Normally, when people talk about a brand, the first thing that comes to your mind is what? You're thinking about a logo, usually, right? A lot of times people talk about branding. The first thing they want to talk about is something like a McDonald's or Apple or something like that. And they always tie it back to the logo or they tie it back to a song or something catchy, right? That's what we think about branding. But a brand isn't a logo. It's not a visual. A brand is a feeling. Okay? Your brand is a feeling. Specifically, it's a feeling that people have inside themselves when they hear about you, when they see you, or when they see or think about anything that is specifically related to you. That's your brand. Okay? In essence, your brand is the thing that people are saying about you when you're not right there to hear it, okay? It's the mark that you've left on people that connects them to you in their mind and in their heart. Now, the important thing when it comes to branding, when we go back to those logos or jingles or whatever that is, a logo or jingle or or, or anything like that, all that is is a trigger. That's a trigger that gets people to feel that thing that a company or a person wants them to feel whenever they think about them. All right, so like with McDonald's, right? You're driving down the road, you see those golden arches. The golden arches aren't the brand, but the golden arches are the thing that triggers that kid to say, mom, I want to stop at McDonald's, I want a Happy Meal. Because he sees the arches and he thinks about the Happy Meal and getting that little toy, he wants to go to McDonald's. Okay, so the logo or the jingle or whatever that is, all that is is a trigger in order to activate that feeling that is really the brand that either you or your company has put on your target audience. So that being the case, 
if you focus on what a brand really is, which is the unique thing that makes your target audience feel like they know you, grow to love you, and feel like they can trust you. If you focus on a brand as that, it becomes a lot easier to see why it's so important that you market yourself as a brand, no matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter whether you want to get a new job. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to get a promotion at your current job, or if you want to go out and start your own business. You've got to see yourself as a brand. Now, here's why. I want to ask you a quick question. I want you to think about it, and then I'm going to give you the answer. All right. I want you to think about what business it is that you're in or that you want to get into. Okay. Think about that. Either what business are you in right now? You're working for another company or working for yourself, or what business is it that you want to get into? You got it? Okay. Well, whatever that is that you think that you do for a living, whatever business it is you think that you're in, you're really in the marketing business. Everybody is in the marketing business. Now, how, how can that be? Well, Marketing is simply the process of connecting with a target audience in order to get them to buy whatever it is that you're selling. Nothing gets bought or sold without marketing. You don't get bought or sold without marketing. And think about that. If you want to get a job or a better job or a promotion, how are you going to make that happen? You got to market yourself. You have to present to people the thing that you want them to buy. In that case, it's you. If you want to start your own business, usually any business that you start, there's going to be at least 10 other people out there in the market doing almost the exact same thing. How are you going to convince people that they need to buy from you rather than your competitor? You got to market yourself. You got to market your business. You go out on the weekend, you go to the lounge, you go to the club, you're looking for a mate, you're looking for somebody to go on a date with, whatever that is. There's so many people out there, right? We always hear it. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Well, what is it that's going to make you look like you're the big catch? You got to market yourself. No matter what you're doing, no matter where you're going, you are always marketing yourself, whether you know it or not. So if you understand that you are always marketing and you learn how to control the way that you market yourself, how to send a single message that is your brand, you become a lot more successful at getting people to buy what it is that you're selling. Usually, that's going to be yourself. So getting past all of that, I understand building a brand is really complicated, all right? It involves building a psychological connection, an emotional connection, and sometimes even a spiritual connection with people who may have never met you or who've only seen you in passing. Or like in my case, who the only interaction they've had with me is the hour or day or week that I spent in front of a classroom teaching them. So we're not going to be able to get into all the intricacies of what it is to build your brand. I'm just going to scratch the surface today, and I'm going to introduce you to five areas that you should focus on to build your personal brand. All right, so the first area that you've got to focus on in order to build your personal brand, you have got to know your mission. You've got to have a vision for where you want to be in the future, and you've got to know your core values, okay? Mission vision, and core values. These three things are common to any company, any company that wants to be successful. It has to know who it is, all right? Company has to know who it is, what their core values are. That's who you are. It's got to know why it exists, all right? That's your mission. That's what you exist to do. And it's got to know where it's going, the vision of the future, where that company is going to be in the world, or the way that company is going to make a difference in the world. You personally have got to have the exact same things. If you don't know who you are and what fits within your core values, then how can you possibly know why you exist in this world, what you exist to do? So I'll give you guys some examples from my own life, my own experiences. Um, Last year, when I was finishing up my degree in business administration, the last class that I had to do was entrepreneurship. So I had to build you know, a fake business, um, which literally just was a, a mock-up of the business that eventually I, I'm going to start. But so I go to build this fake business. It's um, it's a consulting firm. I'm a consultant. So it's it's right up my alley. And 
in that consulting business, I had to give it a set of core values, right? And those core values were actually my core values and the values that I would want to be associated with any business that I was putting out there into the world. And so these are my core values that I live or aspire to live each and every day. All right. So number one for me is exhibit ethical and intellectual integrity, right? Ethical and intellectual integrity. So for me, that means that if I say that something falls within my code of ethics or another thing falls outside my code of ethics, I've got to actually live that, right? I've got to exhibit the integrity of living the ethics that I tell other people are important to me. And the same thing when it comes to intellectual integrity. To me, that means that if I am in this world and I'm thinking one way and I'm living one way and I'm presented with new information that says, you know what, the things that you believed before, they may not actually be accurate. They may not be correct. I've got to have intellectual integrity to be able to look at that new information and say, you know what, I might have been wrong. Maybe I need to change the way that I look at this issue. Maybe I need to change the way that I look at living my life going forward. If you don't have intellectual integrity, then you'll just cling on to whatever those beliefs are that you have, no matter what information is put in front of you. I personally, being an analyst as I am, I don't like that mentality. I, I can't live that way. I don't like dealing with people who live that way. And so I want to make sure that whenever I'm presented with new information, if I can do the research and I find out, you know what, this is right, what I thought was wrong, that I can have some integrity and say, hey, I didn't know what I was talking about. I was wrong. This is the new way that I look at the world based on this new information. All right. So that's my number one core value is exhibit ethical and intellectual integrity. My second core value, build strength through diversity. That's extremely important to me. I hate the word tolerance. I hate it because to me, if you're saying that we need to tolerate each other, all you're really saying is that we need to hate each other, but just deal with it, right? There's no need for me to actually care about you and learn about what makes you different from me. All I got to do is just deal with the fact that this person I hate is over here and not say anything about it. Like to me, that's, that's, not, that's not strength, right? That's not something that's going to make me a stronger, better person. I want to build my strength through diversity by learning about people who are different from me. And not just accepting their differences, but really wanting to find out what is it that you know or that you've experienced that I haven't that can make me stronger and make me better in my world for having learned it. And so build strength through diversity is my second core value. Third is listen for understanding. Whenever I'm in a conversation, I want to listen so that I can understand what the other person is trying to convey, not just wait for my turn to talk. Again, it's a matter of wanting to build my own personal strength. It's a matter of wanting to respect the other person who I'm in a conversation with. And so listen for understanding is my third core value. Next, practice innovative entrepreneurship. That one speaks for itself. I'm always wanting to look for ways to, to innovate, to do things that other people may not be doing or do something in a way other people aren't doing it yet and then take ownership of it and make it happen. My next core value, model the behaviors that you want to see in others. And that goes right back to my ethical and intellectual integrity. If I want people to have ethical integrity or intellectual integrity, I've got to be able to model that myself. If I want people to listen for understanding, I've got to model that myself. All right, my next one, love people and lead from your heart. This is actually a core value that I didn't even realize I had until I had a um, I had a platoon commander when I was in the Marine Corps. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't my platoon commander. It was actually my company commander. It was um, it was Major Coward, and uh, I was being promoted. And during my promotion ceremony, from lance corporal to corporal or corporal to sergeant, I don't remember which one it was, but he was coming to pin on my rank. And Major Cowart said to me, I was I was getting promoted to corporal. I know I was because he was talking to me about becoming an NCO. And he said to me, you know, normally this is when 
I would tell you all the things that I expect from you uh, as a leader of Marines, as an NCO in my company. Um, but I don't need to do that with you because you love your Marines and you lead from your heart. So I'm never worried about the direction that you're going to take them. And that really stuck with me when he said that, because I did not realize that that was one I one of my core values, but it absolutely is. I love people first. And then when I lead, I lead them in a direction that I think is going to make them a better person or take care of them best. Um, my well-being is secondary. And that is, that's a huge part of what makes me, me. And so that is one of my core values. Love people and lead from your heart. And then my final core value is always exceed expectations. In anything that I do, I always look to exceed expectations. So those are my seven core values. And in understanding those things about myself, I'm able then to look at any project that I have in front of me and identify the mission of what it is that I want to accomplish in this project. So, for example, this project, right? Buy Black Podcast. Um, I told you guys in the very first episode what the mission of this project is, but I will give it to you again here, right? So the mission here is to be the beacon that draws consumers and business owners together to ignite the global black economy. That is the mission of this project, right? That's my mission when I'm doing everything that has to do with Buy Black Podcast. And that mission definitely fits within my core values. And so I know who I am and I know how I have to work and apply myself in order to accomplish this mission in a way that honors the core values of who I am and who I want the world to see me as. That's why in that first episode, you heard me say, you know, I'm, you're not going to hear me curse, right? Now, if you don't hear me on the podcast, you'll probably hear me curse, right? But you're not going to hear me curse in this podcast. You're not going to hear me going on rants and tantrums about politics or specific politicians or anything like that. That doesn't fit the mission that I have here. And so it's not going to be a part of this. I can know that and I can live that and I can stay on that track because I know who I am and I know what the mission of this is. And so anything that doesn't jive with that, it's really easy for me to see that doesn't fit. So I'm not going to do that. This does fit. And I'm going to continue going down this direction. And then the vision, if you know who you are and you know why you're here, it's not hard to make a vision to see what you want the future to be, right? And I expressed that vision to you guys over in that first episode in the Welcome to the Show episode as well. You know, I see a future where the black community in the United States and globally is in a position where it has taken ownership economically, literally taken ownership of its economy and then put itself, ourself, in a position where we don't have to ask anybody for anything. We don't have to beg anybody for a seat at the table. We don't have to petition the government or march or anything to get resources. We have built the capability in our community to have our own, to support our own. And once we do that, and we're no longer in a position where we're having to beg to be able to have access to things, that puts us in a position to have political power. Because you get that power when people want something from you, but you don't need anything from them, right? So my vision is to be a part of this movement, this buy black movement that brings people together so that consumers and business owners can say, hey, you got a product I want. We're going to connect. I'm going to spend my money with you and we're going to rotate that dollar right side inside our community. I'm here to connect that, be a piece of that so that eventually we can be at a point where we have complete control of our economics and we can actually start to wield the political power that will put us on par with all the other communities that exist in the United States and across the world. That's my vision. We are on economic and political par with all the other demographics out there in the world so that when we all come to the table together, we've all got chips in the pot, we've all got cards to hold, and now we can negotiate and get our fair share of what is out there in the world 
without being pushed around, kicked around, or resented for constantly coming out with our hands out, begging for something when we got nothing else to offer as a community. So that's my vision. Your your mission, your vision, your core values will obviously be different than mine, depending on where you are and what you're trying to do. But you have to know those things first before you can begin to market yourself as a brand. Number two, the next thing that you should focus on in order to build your personal brand, you need to know who your target audience is. You got to know who you want to connect with, and then you got to speak with them directly. Okay. Looking at this same example, right? Buy Black Podcast. Now, I very easily could have started a podcast that said, you know, minority empowerment podcast, right? Some some kind of a nebulous thing like that, right? And we see that all the time. People want to lump in, you know, the black community with, oh, minorities this and minorities that, and let's let's kind of make it for everybody. Problem with that is that when you make something for everybody, then it becomes for nobody. Then anybody can come in and say, oh, well, I'm a minority. So yeah, this is for me as well. And what tends to happen with that, because we've seen it over and over and over in the United States, is that as soon as you put the word minority on something, every other demographic somehow finds a way to get themselves branded as a minority. And then they start taking advantage of these programs and this access and the black people still get pushed out to the side. We still don't get access to it. So when you're going and you want to connect with a specific group of people, don't be afraid or ashamed to know exactly who your target audience is and speak directly to them. You know, this is buy black podcast. Why? Because I want people to buy from black business owners. I don't care what color you are as a consumer. If you understand the importance of building up the black community economically, I want your dollars coming into this community. And I want those black business owners to be able to circulate those dollars in the community. And so that's who I'm talking to. And that's what I'm talking about. And you know what? I've already seen it. There are a lot of people that are turned off by that message. But you know what? If you're turned off by the message, it wasn't for you. It never would have been for you. And so for me to try to dumb down the message so that more people could be to feel included in that, what it would really mean is that nobody would be on fire about it. Nobody would listen and say, this is what we need because there's really no we. It's just mm, something that's out there in the world that mm, maybe somebody can gravitate to or not. But that's not how you build a movement. That's not how you build a loyal following. That's not how about you how you build a brand. If you want to look at somebody who knows how to find their target audience, speak directly to their target audience and not be upset at all about the people who aren't within that target audience not liking it. Here I will talk about them because it's not in political context. Look at Donald Trump for everything that half of this country could not stand about him, the people who follow him will never, ever, ever, ever flip. Why? Because he is a master of branding. He knew exactly what audience it was that he was trying to connect with. He knew exactly what it is they wanted to hear, what they needed to hear, and what they needed to see in order to be loyal to him and love him and trust him. And he has spoken only to them from day one. And no matter how many people say he needs to stop doing this, he needs to stop doing that, he needs to be more this or that, the man knows who he's talking to and he knows how to connect with his target audience. That is what branding is all about. You're okay with the fact that some people just ain't going to get it. You're not trying to get everybody, but you're trying to make a really deep connection with your target audience. So you got to know who your target audience is and you've got to be able to speak directly to them. All right, the third thing when it comes to personal branding, you have to learn to be genuinely unique and uniquely genuine, okay? You learn to be genuinely unique and uniquely genuine. So what do I mean by that? Genuinely unique means you don't go out and try to be bizarre or off the wall 
or do something that sets you apart from everybody else if it's not really you, right? Like you've seen people say, it's like, oh, you got to do this thing to brand yourself. You got to do this thing so people remember you. But if it's not really you, it doesn't come off as authentic, right? People can't connect with that. They'll think you're trying to put on a pose. So you have to be genuinely unique. I'll give you an example of that. Um, before I moved to Nebraska, I lived out in California. I worked on a team of uh, instructional designers, instructional developers. We were um, we were trainers. I did that for a very long time. I had a team of uh, of six to eight people that I worked with, and within our team, we had a we had a pretty cool team dynamic. But uh, in our team, we had um, there was a guy named James. All right, and James at some James was kind of like that guy that just pushes buttons for no reason because he um because he can uh and and I love it about him but our team lead that we had his name was David and um James started wearing a bow tie to work like one day a week right just started wearing a bow tie and David hated bow ties and he was the kind of guy who if he hated something he would talk about it nonstop he would do everything he could to try to get you to stop doing that thing that he hated because he just he couldn't stand it. James found that out. He started wearing bow ties twice a week, right? And so then David got even more angry about bow ties and he got more vocal about bow ties. So what do you think the rest of the team did? We all started wearing bow ties at least once a week. Started turning to bow tie Thursdays. Every Thursday, everybody on the team was wearing bow ties except David of course. He hated them, but it was just so funny seeing him get so riled up about the bow ties. Now, I personally also hated bow ties at the very beginning. I kind of talked bad about them. But then when I saw how bad David hated them, I was like, oh, yeah, I got to jump into this. And you know what happened? Uh, I started loving bow ties. I started loving them so much that I started buying more bow ties than I had regular ties. And it ended up that I had like 10 or 15 bow ties that were in rotation. And the trend faded and people just started wearing regular ties. But I didn't stop. The bow tie became my thing, not because I wanted other people to see me in it, but I liked the way I looked in them. And so I was the bow tie guy. Everybody had gone back to wearing regular ties. I'm every Thursday, maybe twice a week. I'm wearing a bow tie every week. And I looked that gun good in them. And I was doing it for me. And that's the the genuinely unique thing. I kept wearing them, not because I kept wanting to get a rise out of this guy, but because it really made me feel good to wear those bow ties with my clothing every week. It became part of who I was. And it was like that for a few years. So eventually, you know, I moved away from that team um, and that location, but I still go out there to that, um, to that base to, to do work occasionally. And it never fails. It's been years since I lived out there. But whenever I go back, people see me, they're like, Oh, Gerald, where's the bow tie? Oh man, I'm just, you know, either I'm in uniform or, you know, I'm just in regular civilian clothes. Just like, oh yeah, you know, I, I don't really do the bow ties that much. I don't like to dress up anymore. It's like, oh man, I miss the bow ties, blah, 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 blah. Everybody misses the bow ties, but they remember that, right? I was the teacher who wore the bow ties. I was the guy who wore the bow ties. I was the bow tie dude. And it wasn't just that I wore bow ties, but I was also really, really good at my job. So You've got to have that as well. Your brand has to be tied to you being really good at something too. So let's not leave that out. But that one little thing, that one unique thing about the way that I dressed made an impact on people and it was instantly recognizable. When people see my face, they thought about that, right? I get people sending me on Facebook and in text messages, pictures of bow ties that I might want to buy. So, I mean, it was just one of those things that left a mark on people about me. And then when you talk about flipping that around and being uniquely genuine, all right, whatever it is about you that is genuine, don't dumb that down. All right. Don't, don't try to blend in with everybody else when it comes to anything from your own personal values to the things that you expect from yourself or from people around you. Be uniquely genuine in The case of something like, okay, for me, one of the things about me that is very, very important is to always be willing to tell somebody the truth that they don't want to hear, right? Even when 
that truth could make them angry. Even when that person is in a position of power over me, whether it's in a job or in the military or wherever, if they need to hear a truth that other people won't tell them, I always feel like it's my job to tell them that, to be honest about it, not to be mean about it, not to whine and complain, but to be like, hey, this is the situation as it is. And here's a way that I think you can fix it. Or here's two or three ways that I think you can fix it. To me, that is extremely important. That is being genuine to me. And not everybody works that way. That is one of those things that is uniquely genuine about me. Whatever that is about you, whatever it is in your life that is true to you, that you need to share with other people, share that. Share that thing that other people won't share. Be that person that other people won't be, whether it's out of fear or because they just don't have it in them to be whatever that is. That unique thing is going to also make people remember you. Some people will like it. Some people won't. But remember, your target audience are the people that you need to worry about. Everybody else, they can think whatever they want. But you got to know who it is that you're trying to connect with. All right. And so a few things to think about when it comes to being genuinely unique and uniquely genuine, you've got to always think about, you know, one, what is your image? What is your professional image? What's your pers personal image? What do you want people to see that is going to um, communicate that, that to them about you? Uh, the second thing is consistency, right? You want to be consistent in your approach to life, in the way that you present yourself to the world. And in the way that you interact with people, whether they know each other or not, whether you interact with them one time or a hundred times, you want to put the same image out there into the world with every single person you run into. And you think about this with branding, right? When you're branding yourself and you're interacting with different people in the world, eventually people who didn't know each other before are going to run into each other and they'll both know you. And if those people who never met each other, have the same things to say about you, who've experienced the same things with you, and they're talking to each other around other people, they are spreading your brand without you ever having to be there. Remember I said, your brand is what people are saying about you when you're not there to hear it. So if you are consistently putting out the same message into the world about who you are, you are creating those evangelicals who are out there and spreading the good news about you and what you bring to the table. Okay. So be consistent. The other thing that you want to look at is your creativity. What is it that makes your ideas different? What are you bringing to the table that other people aren't bringing in whatever space it is you're working on? And then the last thing is your credibility, which goes back to your consistency, right? Credibility all, all ties back to being genuine, being genuine. If you want to go deeper into all these aspects of what it means to to build yourself up genuinely to know what your brand should look like. Um, there is an incredible reference out there in the world. It is actually called the complete guide to building your professional brand. And you can find that at www.quicksprout.com slash the complete guide to building your personal brand. And I'm going to put a link to that website into the episode description. It's written by Neil Patel and Aaron Agius is how I have to pronounce it, but it is incredible. I'm actually going through it right now and taking notes and basically using it like a course because it's multiple chapters to help me to build out how I'm going to brand this podcast as we continue going forward and other projects that I'm working on. So if you want to dig deeper into this stuff, Outside of the podcast, that is a great reference that's already out there in the world that you can get to and you can actually use that thing like your own personal course. All right. So getting back into it, we talked about know your mission, vision and core values. We talked about know who you want to connect with and speak directly to them. So that's your target audience. And then the third one, be genuinely unique and uniquely genuine. Now, the fourth focus area for building your personal brand, go out of your way to serve other people and then go the extra mile. Go out of your way to serve other people and then go the extra mile. Now, this is huge for building your brand, especially now if we're thinking about, hey, if I'm out and I don't have a job or I want to get a promotion at my job 
or I'm looking to connect with a different job. Sometimes the only thing that you got is the ability to give yourself away, right? Whether it's your time, whether it is your your energy, whether it's your skills. If you want to go out and you want people to want you to be around, if you want them to associate you with a person that they want to have around, give of yourself, right? Look for ways to give them what it is that you bring to the table. And then when you get those opportunities, go all out, go the extra mile, make sure that you are always exceeding expectations as one of my core values is. Because when you do that, there's a lot of things that you're building on that. One, you're building up testimonials, all right? You're building up contacts. You're building up references, right? You go and try to apply for a job. Hey, who are your references? If the only references you have are your mom and your best friend and your auntie, then that's not going to be as strong as saying, hey, I, re- I have a reference from this nonprofit organization that I volunteer at. I have a reference from this business that I went and did a project for. I have a reference from you know, this school that I went and led whatever other project for, you know, those references of things that you've been doing with your time, that you've been giving of your time to other people are going to be huge in showing the value that you can bring to a company that you're trying to get hired at, or the value you can bring in a higher position within your company that you're trying to move to. All right. So go out of your way to try to serve other people. And then go the extra mile and do that consistently. It will really help to build that brand, that thing that people are saying about you when you're not in the room. And then number five, last but not least, you have to network and understand that I put a capital W in that with an underline. Networking is work. You can't just go out with a bunch of business cards and start handing them out to people and asking them how they can help you. That's not networking, right? Networking is going out and finding people, connecting with them to find out what things they need, and then thinking in your mind, how can I help this person? How can I help this business? Or who do I know who can help this person or this business? And then connecting those people with each other or providing those services to those people. That's what networking is all about. It's not a matter of going out, trying to find out what can you do for me? It's what can I do for you? Because what happens again, when you're going out and you're doing that work to try to find out who can I help today? Who can I help this week? Who can I help this month? Those people that you're helping, what do you think they're saying about you when you're not there? All great things, right? They are now your evangelist out there selling your brand to other people. All right. So go out and network. Key things you can do with that. Go out and find mentors, all right? Find people who have already climbed the mountain that you're trying to climb and reach out to them and find out, hey, what is it that I can do for you so that I can have the opportunity to learn from you, all right? Is there anything that I can assist you on? Is there anything that I can volunteer on? Anything that I can do in order to help you out because I just want to learn from you and your process. Find mentors. So a perfect example of that from my life I have a a normal day-to-day, 40-hour-a-week job, right? I work for a huge consulting firm. Um, But I also have a second job, right? I've actually got like three jobs. But I've also got a secondary job as an independent contractor for a small training evaluation company, right? And the way that I got that secondary job was when I got a certification through this organization, I had the opportunity to spend a little bit of time with the owners and they are small business owners. They run a small business that has a global reach. And I knew that eventually, hey, I want to run my own company. Very similar to this. I want to have my own small consulting firm. And I love the way that they run their business. I believe in the mission of their business. I want to learn from them. When I had the opportunity to sit down and have lunch with the owners of that company, I didn't come to them and say, hey, teach me everything that you know, because I want to be able to do my own thing someday. I came to them and I said, hey, I know that you guys have certified training facilitators who go out and teach your training programs. I would love the opportunity to be one of those facilitators. You guys know that I I know your material. I know your mission and I love your mission. And I would love the opportunity to become one of your certified facilitators. 
because I eventually want to run my own business and I would love to learn from you guys what it takes to run a small business. So you notice there, I was looking for mentors. I was looking for these specific people who are already where I want to go, doing things the way that I want to do it. I was looking for them to guide me and teach me. But I came to them and said, what can I do for you in order for me to be able to learn from you? And through that interaction, I got the opportunity to have this secondary job that I do occasionally going out, teaching people the certification courses for this company. And through teaching their courses and planning for the courses and the backside of the courses and just regular conversations, I've had the opportunity to be mentored by these small business owners who I respect greatly. And it's a mutually beneficial situation for both of us. And so that, that's, that's what I mean by talking about networking, looking for those people who are where you want to be and figuring out what can I do to help them that will also put me in a position to be able to learn from them. And we both grow. On the flip side of that, be a mentor. Look for those people around you who are where you were a few years ago, and you can clearly see where they're trying to go and connect with them and find out how you can help them get there. Do everything you can to mentor the people around you. Third thing about networking, look for opportunities to collaborate with people who are at your level, right? With peers who are out there in the community. Look for collaboration opportunities. And then to me, one of the absolute most important things when it comes to networking, this is one of the most powerful things that you can do. Look for opportunities to connect people with other people looking to get nothing out of it for yourself. If you become a person who people know, if I reach out to them, they will know whoever it is that I need in order to get what I'm looking for. Have you got any idea how powerful that is for your brand? If you're a connector of people, oh, I guarantee you, folks will want you around. Folks will think about you often because we all have problems that need to be solved. We all have problems that need to be solved, but we don't always know who to reach out to in order to get that problem solved. But if you're a person who knows people, then they don't have to know who to reach out to. They just got to know you. Oh, I got a problem I need to solve. Man, I don't know who to go with, but this person knows a lot of folks. Hey, they'll give you a call and you become that connector. Huge brand building opportunity for yourself. All right. So those are the five things. Reaching back to it. Know your mission, your vision and your core values Two, know who you want to connect with your target audience and make sure you're speaking directly to them, what they need, what they want to hear. Three, be genuinely unique and uniquely genuine. So that means genuinely unique. Do things that are a little bit different, but are true to your personality that are going to set you apart from the crowd. And then uniquely genuine. Make sure that whatever those things are that are in your personality that you find to be most true, that you want to put out into the world, that you're doing those things regardless of what the other people around you are doing. Both of those are going to make you memorable to the people who you want to connect with, that target audience. Four, go out of your way to serve other people and then go the extra mile. And last but not least, net work. Put in that work. All right. As I said before, if you want to dive deeper into building your personal brand, Neil Patel and Aaron Agias have this incredible, complete guide to personal branding. It is at quicksprout.com. I've got the link in the episode description. And beyond that, guys, that is it. If you have any questions, about personal branding. If you want to talk to me about that, absolutely reach out. But I'm going to close this show out and I'm just going to ask one thing of you today. All right. I'm not going with the give me the reviews and go to the community and do this and do that. All right. I just need you guys to do one thing for me. All right. If you found the information in this episode useful, I want you right there on your phone, right there in your podcast app. Just go to the share function. That's all I want you to do. And if it's Twitter, if it's Facebook, whichever one of those it is that you use most, share this episode on your Twitter page or on your Facebook account. Make sure you tag me at Buy Black Podcast in that share so I know that you guys are out there. And if you want to give me a little quick blurb, I'm all about getting a little bit of accolades on social media as well. All right. So just go to the share button. 
click that share button for Facebook or Twitter. Tag me at Buy Black Podcast, and I'll really appreciate it. That's all I got for today. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you for being part of the Buy Black Podcast community. If you've enjoyed today's show, be sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Join us next time for another empowering episode. If you're a black business owner anywhere in the world, I want to help you connect with more of your target customers. To get your business in our online directory and find out if you qualify to be featured on the show, send us an email at connect at buyblackpodcast.com or you can reach me, Gerald Jones, directly at gjones at buyblackpodcast.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you soon.